Today, we will review two incidents which could have resulted in serious injuries or fatalities, and highlights of the importance of tailboards and following all safe work practices. Applying proper testing and appropriate grounding procedures each and every time is a must and demonstrates the professional behavior Western Line Chapter contractors expect every day. The first incident we will review occurred in the Rancho Bernardo area near San Diego. Crews had been assigned to replace a pad-mounted switch which necessitated a planned outage in the area. A nearby store arranged for a temporary trailer-mounted generator to supply its power. That portable generator, located blocks away from the worksite, was connected improperly and faulted out under extreme load since it was backfeeding into a grounded circuit. To understand this incident, we will show how the crew's tailboard and mitigating actions of a grounding plan averted what could have been a more serious incident. On that day, crews were assigned to replace a large pad-mounted switch near an intersection. A thorough safety tailboard was conducted, which included a review of circuit maps and the current switching procedure. The entire crew were informed of all the switching steps, isolation points, and grounding plan. The foreman identified all potential backfeed sources, including all potential generators that could be online during the outage. All customers supplying generators were notified to connect their generators properly for protection of backfeed. All parties understood and work commenced. The crew switched out the circuit and started testing and grounding of the neighboring handholes to isolate the pad mounted switch. Grounds were installed at the four locations as per the ground plan in order to isolate the switch. The crew started to change out the PME when a customer notified them that their generator was smoking. The crew halted all work to investigate the issue. The foreman arrived at the back of the store and inspected the connections from the generator to the switch gear. He saw they had failed to switch over to alternative power, which caused the generator to backfeed into the underground circuit. Fortunately, the tailboard had determined which circuit was to be isolated and grounded. That grounded circuit had done its job properly, isolated the backfeed source, and stopped it from propagating further. This situation highlights the importance of tailboards, mitigating actions, and appropriate protective grounding procedures prior to any work being done. Even with assurances the customer's generator would be connected correctly, the decision by the foreman during the tailboard to accurately identify the potential backfeed sources and applying grounds to protect against the potential source prevented major injury and ensured all crew members went home to their families that night. The safe work practices applied by the foreman showed a great example of his professional work and safety leadership. The second event we will review was a backfeed incident that occurred in the Palm Desert area. This event was the result of work being done to replace a multi-position pad-mounted switch on an underground feeder. When the switch was de-energized and tested, it was observed that intermittent voltage was still present on the circuit. Quick investigation determined that backfeed was occurring from one of the nearby residences. It was coming from an improperly configured solar panel disconnect switch. To understand this incident, we will show how the crew's tailboard and mitigating actions identified the cause of backfeed and averted what could have been a much more dangerous incident. A four-man contract crew was assigned to replace an above-ground four-position pad-mounted switch. The crew met with the two-man utility switching crew at the location of the switch replacement, PME 4056. They performed a thorough tailboard discussing the switching and grounding locations. The contract crew started by using their high voltage tester to perform hot reads, checking each position on the PME to verify that the underground components were energized. The voltage was showing as a steady 12 kV. The two-man switching crew arrives at PME 4054. 
This is the pad mount switch upstream of the one they are replacing and the source of power. They verify the switch position they will be opening on their circuit map. They call the switching center and receive permission to open position 4 of PME 4054. They open that position and return to PME 4056 where they inform the crew foreman that the switch has been opened and that the load beyond position 4 PME 4054 should now be de-energized. The foreman calls the switching center and receives a formal clearance on the section of line beyond position 4 of PME 4054. The foreman then brings his crew together and explains that he has been issued a clearance. They verify on the maps and that they have the OK to test and ground the conductors and commence their replacement project. They start testing position 2 of the PME to verify that the circuit is de-energized. However, when they apply the tester, the meter shows significant fluctuations between 6 kV to 12 kV. They continue to test other phases of the switch that showed the same fluctuations. The foreman calls the switching crew, who returned to the site to meet with crew members. The job was stopped to investigate the source of the fluctuations. The foreman decides to start testing transformers which are fed by PME 4056 to determine where the voltage is originating from. The switching crew began systematically testing and opening switches downstream from PME 4056. After opening and checking multiple structures blocks away, they discovered a delta-configured pad-mounted transformer on the roadside, P5478116, that was backfeeding onto the electrical grid. The customer that was being fed by that transformer had incorrectly installed a solar panel system on their house, which was the source of the fluctuating voltage when the crew was testing the cable. They isolated the transformer from the electrical grid and returned to PME 4056. The crews returned to the work site at PME 4056. The cable in position 2 is then retested and they now see that the fluctuating voltage has been eliminated. They ground all sources and complete the switch replacement without further incident. Modern installations of solar panels require an auto throw device to automatically shut off current when the power grid loses power. This device prevents the solar panel from being a source of voltage back into the grid. This is especially important when you understand that transformers are bidirectional. They can not only step down voltage when going from the grid to the residence, but can also work in reverse and step up voltage from the residence back into the grid at dangerously high voltage levels when the current from the solar panels back feeds into the grid. This incident highlights the importance of tailboards, testing, mitigating actions, and appropriate protective grounding procedures prior to any work being done. As we have seen, backfeed sources can be deceptively tricky to find. But proper procedures can identify and isolate backfeed sources before they become a hazard to crews working on de-energized circuits. This is why it is so important to eliminate and ground all sources of feed including backfeed, prior to any work on the line. The Western Line Constructors Chapter is committed to improving our processes, best practices, and standards of safety for our workers, subcontractors, and customers.